Hi all and welcome back to another episode of the video shop. On today's episode I wanted to give everyone a closer look at one genre of my collection. So the collection, I, uh, the genre that I've decided to actually share today is from what you can actually see in front of you there, science fiction. Now science fiction is one of my favorite genres. It's something I probably should have withheld for a little bit longer instead of just throwing it straight out there and sharing it with everyone um, without wetting everyone's lips with a few other genres um, beforehand. But I couldn't help myself. I've you know, absolutely love science fiction for the genre that it actually is. Um, I love the ideas that the genre presents. And I thought it'd be a fantastic opportunity now just to show um, some of the films that I've collected. Now, the ones you're looking at here, they're all VHS. So feel free to go back and flick through this as many times as you want. Obviously, there's quite a few to take in. Robocop, Total Recall, Galaxy Quest. They're all fantastic. Even that Final Fantasy VHS, it is an absolutely beautiful copy. Um, when you pull the cassette out and you actually hold it in your hands, the physical media, um, I believe it's, it's priceless. And I'm very fortunate to actually have a collection such as this. Um, now I've been collecting for years. I remember going all the way back to um, 1997, 1998. Um, some of the first VHSs I ever bought were actually horror films um, and they were all ex-rentals and um, it's something that I've never forgotten. I always wanted to hold on to my collection as well so that if my children ever wanted it um, I could also always pass it on to my children if they ever wanted it. Um, I didn't think it'd ever be truly worth anything. I hoped it would be um, but as time has shown um, they have definitely proven to be um, objects that can maintain their value, um, which was very surprising. So if you go on eBay at the moment, for example, and have a look about on Gumtree, for example, or any other of the sales sites, you'll find that a lot of the VHSs now are equal to what they were worth 20 something years ago. So if you paid $30 back in the day for a copy of 12 monkeys, for example, on a big box, you'll pay $20, $30 now for it. So they're finally um, at the point where the cost of the item is equal to what it was 20 something years ago. And I know most people will be going, well, that's a horrible investment. And you're absolutely right. Um, but the beautiful part about physical media is not only does it maintain its value in the long run, uh, but you can use it. You can actually go into a collection like this, browse the shelf, find what you feel like watching at the time. What a lot of people may not realize today is that going to the video shop and browsing the shelves and finding what it was that you wanted to watch in that particular moment was all about how your mood was. And your mood normally dictated what you watched that night. Whereas you go on Netflix, for example, or other streaming services, um, it doesn't feel that cathartic anymore. It feels like you're sort of getting them crammed down your throat. Um, and I can't stand Netflix for its um, automation process. So you'll be browsing Netflix and then the trailers start playing. And um, when you're browsing in a video shop, it used to be a solitary experience. You used to go in there to purely think about movies. Um, and think about what you wanted and refine your pick until you found exactly what it was that you were looking for. Um, and Netflix has made it incredibly jarring. So you'll be sitting there trying to concentrate on what it is that you want to watch and then suddenly a trailer starts playing and it's just frustrating. Um, so this here, this is obviously a copy of Robocop. Um, you'd think something like this would be extremely easy to find. Rest assured, it was not easy to find. Um, one copy I had to order in from the UK and it did not even show up. I ended up having to request a refund on it along with a whole heap of other videos. Um, eventually, through browsing eBay, I come across a copy and I had to pay a little bit for it. It wasn't 20 or 30 bucks, it was a bit more than that and I won't say exactly what it was on this video. But Robocop is not your typical film. Um, so unlike the other VHSs that have just maintained their value, Robocop 
has a cult following. Um, Paul Verhoeven is a fantastic director. He's done some fantastic work. And Robocop was one of the first ones that was absolutely groundbreaking from him. It was ultra violent. I remember when I first watched it, there was one scene that really stuck with me. Um, it was just so um, jarring to watch and shocking. And it's something that I have never forgotten. Um, so Robocop is definitely up there. It's one of my favorite sci-fi films. Total Recall, on the other hand, is even better than Robocop. And again, it's a Paul Verhoeven film. Um, so absolutely fantastic direction, absolute massive cult following and pop culture following as well. They don't get any bigger than these films. Not only is it an action film, it's got Arnold Schwarzenegger in it. It's also um, a massive science fiction film for its time. And I remember watching this with my dad in the lounge room on VHS. Um, and it was a, a memorable experience. It was absolutely brilliant. Now there's two copies of this. There's an M-rated version in Australia and there's an R-rated version. And the R-rated version, they're both pretty easy to find. So you can find them to add to your collection, um, but you will pay um, a little bit more than 20 or 30 bucks most likely is the idea. Now the first copy that I watched would have been the M-rated version. I doubt I would have been allowed to sit there with my old man and watch uh, an R-rated science fiction film when I was possibly 11 years old. That would have been an awkward experience um, considering some of the subject matter in that movie. And it doesn't get any bigger than Terminator 2. So James Cameron, the whole world knows who James Cameron is now, especially with films like Avatar, for example. Um, but before that, it was Terminator. Terminator 2, True Lies, um, The Abyss. He was just an awesome director. Um, he did start off in the horror section as well. I believe he did Piranha 2. Um, he come in and then the project was actually taken from him as well. So he didn't even get to complete his first feature film. Um, that there's an original big box copy as well. Um, they aren't incredibly difficult to find. You can find them. Um, same with the Terminator here as well. They're not impossible to find in their big box form. I really like the X rental ones. I don't mind the sell through copies such as this one here. What I prefer is the X rental ones. I love the video shop stickers that are on them. Um, so if it's got science fiction up in the corner or $6 overnight or video easy or blockbuster stickers on it, that's what I really like. And I never thought that would be the case. You go back 20 years ago when I purchased X rental videos, I used to peel them off. Big mistake, I totally regret doing that now. I just never imagined in a million years that I would be absolutely nostalgic for video shops themselves, not just for VHS format, but for the video shop itself. I remember paying overdue fees and the horrendous nature of that business. That side of it wasn't very pleasant, but the positives of the video shop definitely outweighed the overdraw fees or the overdue fees that we had to pay. Aliens, another fantastic film. Have a go at that case, isn't that awesome? Look at the imagery of it. That's a big box Aliens film. Definitely was not cheap to track down. Not impossible to find though. There are quite a few floating about. Um, so if you wanted to add one of these to your science fiction collection, your VHS collection, it's definitely not impossible. Um, you just take it easy one at a time. Don't go completely nuts um, like I have in the past. And oftentimes you'll probably find yourself in a bidding war for an item such as Aliens in its big box form. You'll find plenty of sell through copies for 15, 20 bucks maybe. Um, but the big box ones, the ones that they were originally released in, they're the ones that are getting really hard to find. Um, Event Horizon, that's an absolutely brilliant film right there. Absolutely horrendous. Stargate is one of my favorites of all time, and I still don't fully understand why. Um, it starts off so strong, and then uh, most of the time I end up falling to sleep in the middle of it, but I'm still more than content to go back and watch the start for the 700th time. Battlefield Earth, I'm a bit nostalgic for that as well. I just left home, um, and that was one of the releases that was available. Same with Final Fantasy as well. It had been released just after I'd left home for the first time. I was living by myself with my girlfriend. Um, this was actually one of the films that had been released on DVD. It was one of the first releases onto DVD in 2000, 2001. I know there were ones earlier than that. 
But this one, there was a massive movement behind it because it was fully CGI. And I remember a write-up in our local paper, our local state paper, in regards to the quality of the CGI in this film and how they were concerned that actors were going to lose their jobs because the CGI, CGI quality in this movie was so good. Now, if you get a chance and you go back and watch Final Fantasy, um, the CGI has still aged really well, even though it was 20 plus years ago now that it was released. Um, it's aged incredibly well. Now, this film up here, everyone knows this film, Back to the Future 2, one of my favorites from the Back to the Future series. Um, it'd have to go two, one, three for me. Um, three is just something I've shied away from completely. But number two, I'm very nostalgic for it. Plus there's a Jaws reference in it as well. Robert Zemeckis. Um, Spielberg's actually produced the film as well. What more could you want? And then of course The Abyss. Alien Resurrection as you can see there. John Carpenter's Starman. Um, John Carpenter's an absolute, another an absolute brilliant director as well. He's done a very wide variety of genre films as well. So not just science fiction, um, but a lot of thrillers and horrors as well. Um, always a lot of drama and suspense in these movies. Um, in the Mouth of Madness would have to be one of my favorites. Um, this one here, this is actually very rare to get. So this is Blade Runner in its big box form with X rental stickers as well. Um, Warner, Warner Home Video, I think it'd have to be the gem in my collection. It's actually the jewel of the, the entire collection. Um, not only are you getting the film itself and you're getting it in VHS form, but the case is everything. So it's if you actually pull the case apart, you'll find that the slip that's in it is basically a mini poster. And if you try and buy a Blade Runner poster online, an original one, you'll pay thousands of dollars. Yet, if you look at buying the VHSs in a different perspective, what you're actually buying is a mini original Blade Runner poster as well. And I should also mention that there's something magical about watching a film copy that potentially hundreds of other people have watched that exact same film copy especially from X rentals you could imagine how many people have rented out that exact copy I think it's absolutely fascinating to think about now unfortunately that is all the time I have for today's video I hope you enjoyed having a deep dive into my science fiction collection and I really hope you enjoyed having a thorough look at my science fiction VHS collection in particular if you got some value from this film feel free to give it a thumbs up please subscribe i could use more subscribers i could always use more subscribers and until next time thanks again for watching cheers bye